We're continuing and get it done, but today is Resurrection Sunday, and what an amazing time it is to see God do and finish a work. What other day can we really declare a work being fully finished and done other than Resurrection Day? There is no day like resurrection. There is no day like resurrection. Let's, let's go to the word, John 19. Let's go to the word, John 19. Today we're going to talk about what Jesus said. I'll give it to you at the end of these three scriptures. Let's do something different today that we normally don't do here. Let's stand for the reading of this word. I, I think it's at least befitting. Shout out to uh, Sister Mother Minister Rosetta from D.L. Wells who's with us today. God bless you, woman of God. Mother, I know you're from a little old school church. I mean, I am too. We used, to, we used to stand when they read the word. And I think since we're a little bit modern, we don't stand. So today we'll stand because he rose for us. How about that? Let's, let's at least do that. So we're at John chapter 19. Let's go ahead and put it on the screens as well. John chapter 19, it says, after this, Jesus knowing that all, all things were now accomplished. Somebody shout accomplished. accomplished. I'm reading from the New King James Version. That all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled. Shout that word fulfilled. fulfilled. All right. So we come to accomplish and we come to fulfill Jesus said, after all these things, because of the scripture, because of the word, all things would be fulfilled. He said, I thirst. He's transitioning us to the next level. And then in 29, it says, now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there and they filled a sponge. It to his mouth. Verse 30 says, so when Jesus had received the sour wine. He said, can y'all shout these three words with me? It is finished. Let's do it again. We got to sound like a unit. Kevin Hart said we look bad as a unit. I want to sound good as a unit. Somebody shout amen. amen. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, catch your cue right here. He said, it is finished. Y'all sound like a church this morning. And after which he bowed his head. Thank you, brother musician. We're going to talk about it is finished, but I'm still working. Somebody shout Hallelujah. It is finished, but I'm still working. Today, all over the world, Sister Snow, all over the world, isn't this awesome? Nobody's birthday, nobody's fame, no, nobody's anything can trump what's happening right now. No president, no king, no government can trump what's happening right now. Nobody can take this glory from today. I don't care what you do on Monday, but this is the day that all faiths, all beliefs, all people, all youth, all people everywhere, man, woman, girl, boy, anything, black, white, Asian, Philippine, uh, Philippine, or whatever they are, everybody acknowledges the rising of Jesus Christ. They call it Easter Sunday. I'm going to refer to it as Resurrection Day. Is that right with you? Today, all over the world, all people are acknowledging the resurrection of Jesus. We celebrate Jesus because he rose again. Had he not rose, Brother Greg, you know what we would be representing today? His memorial. Anybody ever been to a memorial before? It's sad. Memorials are sad. You go out to the, the sidewalk, they do candlelight visual, Sister Marie. It's sad. You start reflecting on things because that memorial is only where they ended. Somebody say, thank God he didn't end right there. So when we die, sometimes we may have a funeral home going. They call it all these different things. They, they, we memorialize that person. We want to make their memory live forever. But the thing about Jesus, let's preach right now. The thing about Jesus is we don't have to memorialize anything that he's done because he's still doing it. Somebody say, I'm still working. So we, we celebrate him because he rose again. Had he been defeated by death, we would be celebrating something that is not necessary today. Because we do this for everybody else. But Jesus is not like everybody else. Jesus was no ordinary death. Jesus was no ordinary life. Jesus is the everlasting life. Because he overcame the grave, our worship and our praise, Sister Destiny, has a purpose and a value. Did you hear what I just said? Our purpose and our praise has a value. You should be writing this down because many of us don't know the value of our shout. Many of us don't know the value of the clapping of our hands. Many of us, I'm trying to preach it to you right now, like I feel it. Many of us don't know and value the intimate time with God. We, the, the young baby yesterday, Sister Amy, I hate to tell you, your baby, you was here when she told me. We was here. And uh, Sister Amy, God bless you, Sister Amy. She... Um, 
Uh, let's, let's, just, let's just state the obvious. Y'all know we did a renovation here. How do y'all like it? Praise God. And uh, so Sister Amy, now y'all can really feel bad about what I'm about to say, but I don't care. She was the only one to say, pastors, she texted us both in a group text message. I know y'all are really busy. She don't even know what we were up to. I know y'all are really busy, but do y'all need any help? Child, please, we need a lot of help. Get on down here when you get a chance. Come down here. And she came. She saw the work in progress. Stuff wasn't even up yet. She came while it was still happening. Somebody said, I'm still working. And so because she reached out to us, we weren't trying to let everybody in because we wanted to surprise you. And Sister Tawana walked in here like, <laughs> okay, all right. I want y'all to feel like that when you take on your new life. I want you to be like, man, this is good. I love this. When we get to heaven, brother, Greg, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to be touching those streets with gold. I'm, I might forget how to walk. I might be like this. <laughs> so that's how it's supposed to be, right, in the kingdom. And so... She, uh, her little baby girl, so, so hilarious. She got a lot of energy, a ball of energy, right? And uh, so she said, um, do I have to come to church on Easter Sunday? And she was like, yeah, you should come. To, you're supposed to come to church. It's Easter. And um, she said, well, I don't want to come. I don't want to come. I said, why? What's wrong? She's like, I don't know. It's boring. I was like, oh, typical child answer. Okay. So in substitute, what do you do? You ask them, well, what do you want to do? You know what she told me? I was just wanting to be on my phone. I was like, your phone? That's all you want to do for the two hours and a half or so we in church? You just want to be on your phone? And I started thinking, a lot of y'all adults are like that too. <laughs> it's all we want to do is substitute the glory for something else. So I told that baby, I said, you know what, baby girl, don't worry. We got a plan. We working something out. Me and this, one, this ain't the only phase of the church that y'all are going to see. There's another phase getting ready to happen. We're on it right now. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So I thought about it, and I said, man, you know, it's, it's crazy because when I was her age, we didn't have a substitute, you right? Nothing against her parenting or nothing like that. I, it was just the baby gave her a real honest answer. I don't want to, I'm going to be on the phone. I was like, wow, many other adults are doing something else, washing their cars, going to the game or something else, right? So anyways, we have this. This is our culture. So we have to do some things to catch your attention. We have to do some things, like Jesus said, to fulfill the scripture. And so... I love it because not only that, our lives mean more to us than just existing. See, being on your phone, Destiny, is easy. That's just you existing. But you can't come alive through your phone. You, you can't get nothing through your phone that brings you life like being at the altar, like being in the worship experience. Do I have a witness who says, I'm glad that things are opening back up so I can let my praise out in the house of God? I mean, I've been doing it at home a little bit, but that's, that's that little bit. But to feel the music, to feel the high cymbals and the crashing cymbals, to hear the singers, to hear the intercessors, to see the mother shouting. I love that my mother, Mother Neil, is here in the house today. Amen. Sickness tried to get her, but she is here. Somebody say, I'm still working. Yeah, the sickness is finished, but I'm still, I'm still working. And so I got my praise partners today because when we shut down this time last year when nobody in here like five of us and, and praise didn't feel the same and so me and pastor sierra we sat down and start talking and we want to do this we want to do that and i tell you we we did it just like jesus in one week's time and on that seventh day we was like we kicking our feet up we are done right but we are still what working so jesus did not give his life for us to just exist but for us to live. He says, I am come to give you life and life what? more abundantly. So if you are coming in this place and all you're doing is just existing, then you're truly not living the life that Christ has given you. He did not rise for you to just be alive. Everybody has that promise of life and death. But what do you do in between? You have to live. Yeah. I can't just mope around. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. I'm coming down your road in just a little bit. I can't just mope around like nothing ain't happening. The church, something is always happening at the church. Something is always happening at Walmart. Something is always happening at your school. Something is always happening on your job. Something is always happening. I love my sister, Sister Snow. I'm just testifying around the room as I go. Y'all don't mind me. I'm going to call you anyways. Amen. Sister Snow, she was proud. She got her um, uh, promotional thing going on. She's working some stuff out. And she says, I'm going to take some people and I'm going to be 
healed my team. You know who else said that? Jesus Christ. I said, God, I'm, I'm going to take this man over here that's in this boat. He don't really know how to fish, but I'm going to teach him some things. I'm going to take this man over here, uh, moving this axe and this hammer. I'm going to teach him how to really build a house because he don't know a house like until he see the house that's in my father's house. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And I'm going to take this, this law degree program. I'm going to take Pastor Sierra and she's going to write the Romans chapters out for me because I need to put an institution in for the people that's coming into the house. Amen. And so he had all these things planned out. Somebody said, you got to have a plan. Let, let's pause right there. Let's talk business real quick. Can we talk business? God bless you, our people in the back. God bless you. We, we, let's, talk, um, let's talk business for a second. Sister Destiny, can I go to business class? I told Sister Amy, daughter. She, she's doing media uh, with us. She joined the media team. We had an inaugural meeting yesterday, right? <laughs> Baby girl, I feel so bad for her because she said, I don't know nothing about computers. I said, girl, I'm going to be your computer teacher. You never thought you would come to church and be the computer class at the same time. I'm going to get you up to speed, I told her. So, so let me get you, give you some business class because you want to start a business one day? If you don't, your neighbor do. I know she do. Okay? <laughs> let me give you some business class real quick. Y'all ready for this? In order for you to have a complete business... This is elementary. Y'all ready? You have to have a plan. Come on. <laughs> it's just that simple, Mother Rosetta. And, and, and many of us are dreaming big things, but have no plan. So you can't have something that says it is finished unless you've worked on it in between. See, the product can be just existing. We see, she- we see product on the shelves at Walmart, right? We go in there. I was at Home Depot all this week. And it's like, man, some of the products are jumping off the shelves because they are alive. Things are happening with those products. And then there's some of them that's just collecting dust. You know what we did while we renovated the church? Everything that was collecting dust, get it out of here. If it ain't praising, if it ain't useful, get it out of here. Can I come down your road real quick? You got a lot of stuff in your life, a lot of stuff in your home that is collecting dust, and you want to wipe it. No, God says, get it out of here. Oh, I want to offend you because he didn't rise for you to be held on to that stuff. My wife, Pastor Sierra, God bless her. I love you so much, sweetheart. I wanted to wait till you came out here to give you acknowledgments, but I love you. That woman of God, she, she danced, and y'all don't know, I'm not going to tell her whole testimony, but she danced through a little bit of an issue as, as well. Amen. She pressed through to say something's got to break, something's got to change. And I'm telling you, my wife said to y'all, y'all didn't understand that Kiara Shear and my wife and, um, and Tasha Cobbs all teamed up today to let you know that he did not rise for you to be held on to the same old, same old. Don't you dare say, I believe in Christ. And when somebody asks you, Brother Greg, how your day going? Same old, same old. That's a sl- Slap in the face of the blood. Am I talking to somebody right now? That's a slap in the face. Don't you say things that's against God's word after you receive God's word. Hello? You don't say the things that's opposite of his revelation and his healing and his power. If he's giving you power, then you have what? Power. You're sitting back moping around for Make things happen. My father is a creator. He's a problem fixer. He's a solver. He's a regulator. Why aren't we doing the same things? If I have a problem, I know who to call. If I don't know how to decorate, I know Sister Peaches does. If I need some muscle, I got my brothers back there. Somebody say amen. If I need a manager, my wife is a manager. Sister Snow is a manager. Deacon Charles is a manager. I know who to call. Why aren't we calling the right resources? But we say it is finished. Church is good. But we still working. I don't want church to just be good. I want church to be life changing. When I leave out of here, I want to be so open about life. Me and my wife got, we done with this, right? But we're still working on something else. My wife and I tomorrow, we married, but we plan meetings with one another. We get on each other's calendar. What time you going to be off? Because I need this meeting. I need two hours of your time. We're not talking about this. We're going to only talk about that. That's how you do it. Sometimes you can't let everything in. You can't talk about what's going on on Facebook trying to have a business meeting. Okay. Tashari, not Facebook for you. Maybe TikTok. You can't be on TikTok trying to make money over here in this business meeting. TikTok going to have to hold on. Unless TikTok is your business, then you're going to have to learn how not to get so indulged in TikTok and learn how to make TikTok make uh, (laughs) some money for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I know it passed here, but they ain't with me. Amen. We celebrate Jesus because he rose again. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
So continuing in our series, Get It Done, Deacon Charles, this is the full definition of a work being fulfilled. In, cha in John chapter 19, verse 30, he says it clearly. When Jesus had received the sour wine, the bitter wine, they didn't even have the audacity to give him something that was more fulfilling, more satisfying. In life, in this Christian journey, Mother Neil, you're going to find out that the, the world will rather give you something sour and see how you react to it. And many of us react the wrong way to the sour thing. Jesus took those sour thing, drank and what did he say it is finished and he bowed his head but he still was working even unto death jesus was still working ain't that awesome even unto death jesus was working but i have to ask you a few questions this is what we're all talking about all the churches are talking about this all the kingdom is asking the same question what why and how why did jesus say it is finished gianni why don't answer that why did he say it is finished what did he mean? It is finished. What's finished? What's finished, Jesus? You sitting up on the cross bleeding and, and scratched all half to death. You about to die. What's finished? You? Are you finished? Are we finished? What's finished? How does that affect my life and my family? What does that have to do with me? What does that mean for those who died? I have family that died. You talking about finished. Bring them back since you talking about you going to come back. Bring my uncle back too. Y'all know Bone does, man. I miss my Uncle Charles, y'all. He shouldn't be gone. Yes, he should. <laughs> what does that mean for those who died before me and those that are on their way? What does that mean? I don't know if his name was Uncle Charles, but I was looking at Charles when he said it, when I said it. Amen. <laughs> I ain't heard that song in so long, so y'all don't quote me on it. Praise God. There is so much context to these three words. It is finished. Sister Marie, there's so much context. Let me tell you what it is. The religious leaders in that day, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, y'all have heard me talk about these people before. You see them in the uh, New Testament all the time, giving Jesus trouble. They were giving him trouble because they were so worried, Mother Neil. They were more worried about what would happen to the law versus what Jesus was going to do to fulfill it. Jesus came on the scene and preaching. He said, I'm going to fulfill the law. I'm going to make it right. I'm going to bring it all together. I'm going to fulfill it. And they heard that saying, something's going to happen to our law. Something's going to change. That means if he changes things, we may not have the same power over you people. Okay, that one just went over your head. Because our government is doing the same thing even today. They're trying to make sure not, that's why we have two, uh, not two parties, but we have uh, two major parties. And they're fighting so one party gets the benefits over the other party. And this is what happens. Sadducees, Pharisees, Republicans, Democrats. And you got all this stuff going on in between. And this is what's going on. They're giving him trouble because they don't really want the change to come. They would rather have their same old, same old attitude. Sister Amy, you feel me? They don't want change because they would rather just live in the same muck and mire clay that they've been in. They would rather just still sit in here with this house full of junk. They don't want you to move it. They don't want you to change it. And the Sadducees and the Pharisees and some of us have hoarders mentality. And I want to offend you right now. It means that you keep collecting junk after junk after stuff after stuff. And it's not helping nobody. It's not even helping you. You should not be walking around your life tiptoeing around. You should be free in God. I love how Sister Tawana, y'all didn't catch it. See, as pastors, we catch all this stuff. The live, the countdown had just ended. Sister Tawana wasn't even on camera yet, but she was being seen. That woman of God walked up here so confident. I don't know if it's because of the aura or just, I, I don't know what it was in her. But I, before I walked in the office to go do what I had to do, I told her, I said, girl, I saw that you walked up here like, she said, yeah, pastor, I walked up here confident. We about to get this thing going. Right. That's how we look, should live. She didn't walk like stuff was in her way. She walked like things had been free. Jesus says, I am the way. Let me pause right there. His way is clear. His way is not cluttered. His way is not repetitive. His way is straightforward. It's going somewhere. In Jesus, you have a destiny. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And so even though the religious leaders heard the preaching, like you're hearing right now, you hear us preach these words, Pastor Sierra. You hear us preach these words, Pastor Corey. You hear us teach these words, Apostle Wells. You hear us teach these words. Then you go over and you leave us and you go to TD and you go to Joel and you hear them teach. Y'all know it's true. Y'all hear these words preach. My, my daughter, Sister Marie's daughter, right? She told me yesterday in our meeting. She said, Pastor Corey, I saw this thing on this other church and we actually went too. I was like, oh, y'all went too? Jesus Christ. All right, cheated on us for a day, it's cool. But what'd you get back from it? She told us where she where'd she go? Where's Sanaya? She's somewhere 
Oh, there she go. Hey, man. She told me. She was honest. She said, Pastor, I love how they did this thing. And I said, great. I'm going to write it down, and we're going to get to it. So Sister, Sister, Sister Sanaya's uh, thought about what can enhance our ministry is going to go into play very soon. Yeah. Amen. Out of the mouth of a babe, it's fine. Yeah. So she said, Pastor, I have the courage to tell you what I saw at somebody else's church, but I know it's going to be good over here. Yeah. We can do it. And she said, Sister Tawana going to do it. So, Sister Tawana, if it's next Sunday when I pull you to the side, I'm going to pull you and Sister Sanaya. So, if I give you your instructions, because you can't hit the pastor, but you might nudge her. Girl, why you volunteer me for this stuff? <laughs> Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Matthew chapter 5, because there's a lot of misunderstanding going on in the kingdom, going on in our families, going on in the world today. But there, there, there's, there's something that has to be acknowledged here, because Jesus did not come to destroy your life. A lot of Christians believe if I get saved, you, you run into this can't do lifestyle. But being saved, being a Christian, being a believer is not a life of can't do's. I'm not hitting nobody right now. You are not living a life where you can't do anything. I love my grandmother to life. She's 92 years old and I feel bad for her because she ain't never been to the beach. Mother Rosetta, because the old school church told her it was a sin to go to the beach. And, and Sister Peach is going out to church on Sunday. She couldn't even believe that. How they don't let you go to the beach? The beach? They couldn't go to track meets. My sister, they couldn't go to the movies. They couldn't do nothing. Everything was you can't. You can't. You can't. But the word has brought us alive. We have more freedom than we give ourselves credit for. Watch this. Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 17, New Living Translation, it says, Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish, which means destroy, the law of Moses or the writings of the prophet. No, I came to accomplish. Somebody shout accomplish. He, he means, uh, Brother Greg, he came to fulfill the law in their purposes. I tell you the truth, verse 18, I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail, every I will be dotted, every T will be crossed. You got a Lord's case J, I'm going to dot it too. You got a little L, big Q, I'm going to put a line through it. Everything is going to be in place. The law will only disappear until all of its purposes have been achieved. There is a lot of misunderstanding about the context of life in Christ. What Jesus uh, work even what made Jesus work even more intense to Amy is that he had to establish a new order. Watch this without tearing up the old. He had to establish a new way, Gianni, without tearing up the old. That means now this generation, Sister Destiny, Tashari's generation has to come through the church with all the social media activity, all the technology activity, and now we still have to lay a Christ on top of it. But he's not destroying your technology. He's not taking away your social media. He's not taking away your gadgets and gadgets. He's not taking those things away. He didn't take them away when we came up. Oh, the pastor might have took it away. The elders might have took it away, but Christ never took those things away because he's not, oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Let me, let me come down real quick. Jesus is not intimidated by your resources. Wow, come on. Oh, Mother Rosetta, they don't hear me today. He's not intimidated by your resources. Why? Because he's all power. I don't care how much you charge up that iPad or charge up that, uh, that whatever it is. He is not intimidated by how much Netflix you got on your TV. He is going to get exaltation somehow, some way. Last week, we found out if these keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. So I'm not, I'm not worried about you being on your phone, texting and making it set up while you're getting ready to get out of church. I'm not intimidated by that. Because I will be exalted is what the word says. He shall be exalted. So there's no intimidation with Jesus. We get intimidated when you do something toward us. Because why? We're flesh. We're human. So we get bothered. But when Jesus rose up, he didn't rise up to get bothered. He didn't rise up to be intimidated. He didn't rise up to be threatened. He is the threat to everything that comes against him. The Bible says when the enemy comes like a flood, he raises what? The standard. So they're going to come up with a They already got other social media platforms that's taking off. They got Clubhouse now. That's another one, right? Many of y'all don't know. They're just coming out with stuff. They got all these things, these activities to get people's attention. But the church, the word will be fulfilled no matter what. Don't matter. Add it on. His power, his blood, it still works. 
so you can have every technology. Moffitt Cancer Center is building a brand new state-of-the-art facility. And Jesus is not intimidated because just the drop of his blood. Oh, I don't have anybody in here. I, let me go on this side because I don't know what side is working right now. But I, I, I read the scriptures, Sister Tawana. And Sister Tawana, the word told me this, Pastor Sierra. It said that when that woman reached out and touched the hem of his garment. So why am I intimidated by St. Joe and Moffitt when I could just touch the hem? Just, just the hem. Nothing against anybody, Sister Marie. I know you're in the health field. Nothing against this poor baby right here that got to shoot up people in their arms with this vaccine. Put it on camera, this one right here. She going to give y'all a shot. And I, that's good. I think you should. If you, if you got the authority and the permission to do that, that's fine. Jesus didn't stop that from happening. He ain't intimidated by medicine. <laughs> he ain't intimidated by no vial, no shot. His blood still works. He still has healing power. There's still power in the name of Jesus. So as long as that is in place, everything else can still happen. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us that the world will wax gross in sin, but salvation will never be intimidated. I'm going to hold on. Let me move on. How do you simply set the record without destroying the history? Jesus, how do you come in and set the record straight, but don't destroy the history? I never thought about that until studying for this message. He came in. Had the whole law of Moses on his backside, getting ready to put it on his shoulders. Oh, I'm getting there. And he, and he had to carry it carefully because what he was going to bring in was much powerful than the law he was carrying. But he didn't want to do away with the law. What I'm trying to tell, ooh, what I'm trying to tell you is he is putting your family lineage on his shoulders. He's going to bring himself in, but he's not going to tear away everything that, mm, that, that the family has established. None of that is going to get the wells is going to be a safe name. The Singletary is going to be a safe name. The Richardson is going to be safe. The Scotts are going to be safe. The, uh, the, 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 the uh, Charleses are going to be safe. All of them are going to be safe. The Blankenship is going to be safe. I text her. I kept seeing her name show up on TV. I was like, are these people your relatives? <laughs> Making millions of dollars. Get them here. Got some stuff we trying to do. Just name on the ballot. Name in the NFL. I'm like, Blankenship? I ain't heard that name until her. And now I see it all over the place. Girl, your name going somewhere. Better get connected. Amen. So how do you set the record straight without destroying the history? One of America's, let's talk about our country. One of the worst attempts that America is having right now is they're trying to establish a new order. Y'all see it? They're trying to establish a new order, but they don't want to embrace their dark history. I have a message for America. You cannot, I'm sorry, sweetheart, you cannot set a new standard and, and neglect the history that you have upon yourself. No, 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 no. Our people have suffered and, and the world has suffered and countries have suffered because of America. But we call it the greatest land uh, in the world, the greatest country in the world. Nobody is saying that outside of the U.S. That's just our opinion. That's just what we think about ourselves. And, and they say it as though everybody is thinking that. But when we travel, I'll be, I'll be watching out because I know other countries got some stuff that they want to do to American people. Oh, it's true. It is very true. And so I don't, I don't think that we're above anybody. I think that we need to get some stuff straight. And we need to have a real, a real conversation about what's happening and what has happened. I'm not talking about black and white. I'm talking about a whole lot of stuff. So you go through your American history book. What, what my, what, oh, there she go. When you go to history class, there's some stuff they're not going to tell you. When you log in, there's some stuff they're not going to expose you to. They're going to only tell you, how many of y'all know, Tasha, you know Martin Luther King? Did you know he was a pastor? You didn't? Now you know. And guess what that pastor was doing? Oh, that this pastor. He smoked cigarettes. Look it up. Don't talk about MLK like that. This is the stuff in the history books. They don't tell you. And I can tell you a lot more. I'm not going to shame the man of God. I'm just saying there's some things that we don't see because MLK don't want us to embrace that part of his life and the other parts of his life because he was making a move happen. He was making some things happen. Yeah. But we also have to stand and give our account. Job says, I'll still make my account known before God. 
Yet, though he slay me, I'm going to still give my account before him. I'm going to embrace the issues I'm going through. I'm going to embrace the dark history. I'm going to embrace the fact. I'm going to embrace all of it because you know why? It's part of my story. And it's also part of his story. And Jesus did not come to destroy any of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. So every secret you have, Deacon Charles, Sister Christina, Mother Neil, Sister, Sister Peaches, Sister Marie, Derek, my brother, right? Every secret that we have, Sister Amy, Sister Tawana, every secret we have, although you don't tell us, oh, you still have to embrace it on the day of judgment. I hate to tell you. We're still going to have to give an account for everything. And Jesus did not come to destroy all those things. He came to lift us from those things. Heal us from them things. It was uncommon for a king and the highest official that was ruling to set his own set of policies and, and, and do. It was common for them to bring their own set of policies. Y'all see it. We just went through an election cycle. So one comes in. They set the new order and they begin to do away with everything that was old. Right. This is this is every four years. If we get a new one in four years, they're going to do the same thing. Don't matter what party affiliation. They have their own set of standards that they want to imply. And what happens is, it was common for that to happen. But Jesus is no ordinary king. Look at your neighbor and say, he's no ordinary king. He's no ordinary king. Jesus makes a strong declaration. He says, I did not come to destroy the law. The law is also referenced as the word of God to Charlie. So he is not here to destroy the law or the words that were given by the prophets. He came, somebody shout, to fulfill it. Which means Jesus' purpose to accomplish all that was written in the word of God. It was his purpose to accomplish everything that was said and written about Jesus. He was coming to fulfill it. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, there is about 300 different prophecies about Jesus Christ. And how many do you think he fulfilled at the cross? All 300 he fulfilled at the cross. Every last one of them. The thing we take for granted is that Jesus took the weight of the law and put it on his shoulder. You don't understand how much weight that is to take the weight of the law and put it on your shoulders. Donald Trump didn't have the audacity to do that. And Joe Biden certainly don't have the audacity to do that. And I know y'all love Obama, but he never could, never will. But Jesus Christ put the whole law up on his shoulders so we could find fulfillment. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the government shall be upon his shoulders. That was a prophecy that at the cross he fulfilled it. Furthermore, Jesus has to also allow and follow all, I'm sorry, furthermore, Jesus has to follow all and uphold all the holy standards of the law. Everything. He was a Jewish little boy. So he had to also adhere to the law. Personally obey the strict requirements of the law and fully satisfy the ceremonial observances. So if they were having any Jewish tradition, any festivity, any feast, he was going to acknowledge it. Although he was the king himself. The most powerful thing we can gather here is this, that Jesus was not only teaching these things, but he was doing these things. Jesus led by example, which is why Paul was wise enough to say, follow me as I follow Christ, because Christ also knew how to follow. But he was a leader. He also knew how to follow. The most powerful thing we can understand is that we don't want a hypocritical leader. Oh, my God. Pastor Sierra, they're not with me. They were good with bone thugs. Now they got this deep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We don't need to be following no hypocrites. Come on. Okay. Let me get down y'all road real quick. Sister Twan. Let me step down here because the, the people that's following the hypocrites don't want to talk. So maybe it's you. Maybe you're the hypocrite. Maybe you're saying the things that you don't live by. Maybe, maybe you are a do as I say and not what I do type of parent. Maybe you're that type of wife. Maybe you're that type of husband. Maybe you're that type of child. Maybe you're the hypocrite. But the blood was shed for you too. Hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something. I don't say that to make you feel bad. I was a hypocrite once before too. Before salvation, all of us was hypocrites. Let's just be honest with you. Oh, you said some things that you did not do. 
you, you, you lied on your interview. Sister Snow, don't let them fool you. That resume, child please, they ain't do all that stuff. But they're going to walk in like Sister Tawana walked up here for worship. They're going to walk in. No, you don't know nothing about no Excel document. No, nothing about no PowerPoint. <laughs> you, yeah, they got on YouTube five minutes before the interview. Oh, y'all stop. Deacon Charles in my line. That's what they do to you, don't they? Is that what you did to get your job? Don't answer that. <laughs> joking, I'm joking. Listen, we all know what it is like, but Jesus because he never did that, we can now live this way. If you believe in God, then you have the power to overcome the things that were in your past. Amen. How many of you have a dark history, a dark past? You have some things that you don't want to share openly because those, some of those things people would judge you by even if you told them you were delivered. Oh, I don't have a Christian. I don't have a saint in here. I told you I was delivered from it, but I'm sharing my testimony. You're still holding me to it. That's why we don't have testimony service. Because y'all Christians still think I'm in it. I'm not in it. That's why we have deliverance. Somebody shout deliverance. That's why we have it. Because I'm not in it no more. I've been what? Delivered. You know what deliver means, Greg? It means to go from one place to another. I've been delivered. I'm not sitting up here hoarding my past. I'm being delivered from it. That's why I can share my testimony. I love this. The Lord gave me this last month. The worst parts of my story, Sister Christina, are the best parts of my testimony. The worst parts are the best parts of my testimony. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, Jesus heals and deals with the hypocrites. He deals with them. He sat with them. He ate with them. And they all went to the synagogue. They went to altar worship center too. They Oh, can I hit you? They serve on the media team. They sing on the praise and worship team. They do the announcements. They sit at the door and usher. They help clean the church. These same ones did all the work at the church. So don't feel like you left out. Because Jesus sat with all of us 2,000 plus years ago. Before you was even born, Gianna, he was sitting with you. That's how powerful Jesus is. So here we see Jesus establishing the culture of the kingdom without falling into or destroying the culture of the land. Watch this. Jesus had to live a very precise, detailed life for us to have life more abundantly. De detailed, precise life for you to have your freedoms, Destiny. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. For you to have your freedom. I know you're smirking right now because you're thinking about all your little freedoms that you get away with. I want to tell you that Jesus had to live a very detailed life for you to get away with the things you get away with. Okay, maybe I'm not talking to you, so I'm going to come over here because you, you, ain't, you ain't reverencing God right now because somebody going to tell me that they enjoy some freedoms that ain't in the scripture, but Jesus died for those too. So maybe, Mother Neil, maybe, maybe it's your freedoms I'm talking about that you get away with some things that, 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 that's not aligned with the, the scriptures. That's fine because Jesus died for those too. The problem with that is between Destiny and Mother Neil we have to learn what his death really means and the value of it. I know I have these freedoms, but Paul says, I hear you, Holy Ghost. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. What does that mean, Destiny? It means that even though it is permissible, I don't have to do it. So now let me tiptoe down to my household where my wife seemed to think that every time we go out to eat, who knows my wife by now? What are we going to get, Sister Tawana? A shake. You hear them, Pastor Sierra? They all said it with me. I know Snake and Shake open. I know Sonics is open. Oh, and she loved to hit me with the cold stone. Oh, my God. Derek, do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's open, but I don't have to go in there. Is that a word right there? That's a whole nother sermon. It's, it's hard. It's tight, but it's right. I know it's open. I know it's available. I, I really want to walk down y'all road, but y'all might get offended. Somebody said, please. Okay. I know he's selling it, but I don't have to go buy it. I know they're serving it. I know they gave that last call, but I don't have to be at the bar. 
Y'all know how many restaurants we go to that all serve alcohol? All of them. Most of them. And although it's acceptable, it's permissible, you're old enough, right? <laughs> You've been waiting. How old are you? Jesus Christ. She done lost her mind. 22 years old. I remember my, my drinking. Let me testify. My brother, what's your name? Derek. Derek. Okay, now I got to call you fella. Derek, let me tell you, at 22 years old, my drinking, I had, uh, what's, the, what's the school before um, Head Start they'd have? Is it like pre-K? Pre I was a pre-K drinker. 21 was like third grade. By the time I got to 21, it was like third grade. I was well into it. Wow. <laughs> I, st pre I was pre-K. Then I was VPK. I was vacation Bible school and back. And I was elementary. By the time I hit 21, child, please. It was a done deal. I was, I was well in it. Oh, y'all might not. You want me to turn this mic on so y'all can testify? Because y'all might not share y'all stuff. But by the time y'all got her age... You was in some stuff that, that four-year-olds hadn't even done yet. Amen. But there's blood for you. There, there's, there's, there's a sacrifice for you. There's, I'm saying all this to say, yes, that part of my life is finished, Destiny. But I am still working. And I'm not even talking about myself. The I am, Jesus Christ, the Lord God, the Sovereign Father. He is the one that is continually working while I'm letting go of some things. The Bible says, even if I don't have the words to say, the Spirit makes an utterance for me. And so, even though I'm, I'm confused about how to say no to this man, I don't know how to say no to this woman, I'm caught up in some stuff. I've sent this text message, and I'm not getting the reply, but I really want this reply. If you got an iPhone, you understand what that read receipt do. You be sitting there staring at it. It's all delivered. And you just waiting on it to say red. And I've sent some prior to marriage. Somebody say hallelujah. Some text messages that were sitting on delivered that I was like this. Ooh, when they read this. Somebody say yeah. Is this helping anybody? I'm saying all this so you don't feel bad about sitting in the atmosphere of the king because he sat in your atmosphere prior to your birth. Amen. I was a social smoker. I never smoked on my own. Like, that wasn't something I did. But because the gang was doing it, my boys were doing it, right? We riding. I'm in Ohio. First time I've ever smoked the stuff from the earth, right? Because I ain't do the stuff off the counter. I was scared of that. But they had the stuff from the earth. That's the, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. Fella, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, okay. I just want, I just want some people to be real with me. I don't know. Jeez, thank you. Yeah, stop acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Jesus. If you're afraid to embrace it, then don't sit on the front row. You ever been to a comedy show? I'm, I'm going to call you. I'm sitting there looking at you. You chilling. You might be chilling too hard. Let me sit you up. You chilling way too hard. Sit up. Girl, you supposed to help her, Sister Marie. All right, Destiny, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Okay, let's try it again. You know what I'm talking about? That's, that's more, see, confident. Sister Tawana, teach this young lady how to be confident in her answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pastor, I know what you, see, if you would have been like, yeah, Pastor, I know what you're talking about, instead of like, All right. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how you keep business out the streets. All right. Praise God. Just taught you another lesson. That's business. When you go to that interview, you know you don't know nothing about no Excel. But when Sister Snow asks you, you know how to do Excel? Yes, ma'am. And when you leave that interview, then you come to your pastor's house, Pastor Sierra, Pastor Corey. What's Excel? Okay. Sit down, baby. I'm going to call Ariana because I know she don't know it either. So I'm going to get both of y'all together and do this all at once. Ain't that good? Amen. So the pastors become your, your computer class. Let me get back to the story. All I'm saying is, when I was in Ohio, Sister Amy, I, I didn't have no intentions of smoking. Didn't really care to do it. That wasn't something I wanted to do. But because of my environment, because of the people I socialized with, because of the people I trusted, Sister Christina, the people that I, if I got too drunk and hung over, who I trusted to take care of me. My boys. 
my teammates. We're hitting each other throughout the week playing football. But at the end of the day, on the weekends, I'm trusting you that if anything go down, you got my back. So I feel safe to roll it up and smoke with you. I never even did that before. But somehow I found myself past the year socially doing things that other people were doing that I had no desire to do. Let me walk back because y'all missed it. We find ourselves doing things socially because other people are doing it. I, I know I got a real one over here, so I don't even bother with you, Destiny. You know what I'm talking about, Sister Katanya? Yes, that's how you do it. You saw what she did? Because we do things socially that we don't desire because other people are doing it. It's cool. It seems okay. But you don't know in the long run what it is holding you from. What is it keeping you from? I don't want to be no social butterfly flying all over the place with no destiny. I want to be like an eagle. Mount up with wings. Eagles have places to go. Eagles are very decisive. Eagle, do is there an eagle in this place? Am I helping you right now? I got to hurry up because Pastor Sierra got reservations for us. So listen, I need to know if you are able to still acknowledge Christ Acknowledge your freedoms and make a choice. Mother Neil, the other week I preached about Jesus in Gethsemane. Jesus had the authority and the will and the ability to choose not drinking the cup and taking on sin or doing it. He could have easily just... They're like, all right, I made it this far, Father. I'm not doing this. I'm not going to allow you to turn your back on me at the cross. I'm not going to allow you to remove your, because all of my life, all of my existence, I've always had you there. But as soon as I put on sin, I'm thinking about it, you're going to turn away from me. And this is how Jesus dies. Because this was the first time the son was separated from the father in that way. I'm getting ahead of my message. But, but understand this, at the cross, he dealt with these things. But he also had the ability to say, I don't want to do that. He could have. He could have said no. But why didn't he? Because the father's will was more important than the freedom he could have received in that moment. Even so, Y'all don't think I'm preaching the gospel. Even Satan knew Jesus had some freedoms. Turn this stone into bread if you are really the Messiah. Call these angels to come get you down from here because I know they won't let you even stub your toe. Call them. He knew Jesus had some freedoms and Jesus did not flex on Satan. No. He, he didn't stunt on Satan. He said, it is what? Written. You know who I am because it's written, Mother Rosetta. It's written. My name is written. I know who I am. I sing and I worship because it is written who I am. Who are you? Somebody say, who are you? Who are you? More than a conqueror. Somebody say, who are you? Who are you? Victorious. Somebody say, who are, who are you? I am here. Somebody say, who are you? Who are you? I am delivered. Somebody say, who are, who are you? I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. So I don't sit back nervous. Let me help y'all nervous people. You don't have to be nervous when you embrace the fullness of the king. Let me help y'all shy people. You don't have to be shy when you embrace the fullness of the king. I stutter every now and then, but I snap out of that. Oh, no, you're a child of God. Get this word out. Get this word out. My wife said, you don't got no reason to close your eyes. Keep your eyes open. We all deal with some stuff. I'm being transparent. So I start opening my eyes. Sometime last year, I was like, I'm going to keep these mugs open. Because it's so easy to pray like this. And sometimes I do it and I catch myself, open your eyes. What would you closing your eyes for? There ain't no Freddy Krueger in here. Open your eyes. Amen. I don't go in the bathrooms afraid to, what they say, candy man, candy man, candy man. I don't, child, please, that stuff don't bother me. It used to. But I've been delivered. Somebody say, I've been delivered. <laughs> All right. To be able to complete such a work, you have to learn how to be consistent. This is the next part of the message, and then we're getting ready to close out. Y'all ready? Somebody shout consistent. Even if you're still working on it, Destiny, Derek, even if you're still, this one. <laughs> even if you're still working on it, right? It is something that the teachings of Christ greatly encourage. Consistency. Consistency. Get that, get that word in your spirit. Consistency. 
I want you saying this on your way to your job, consistency. I want you saying this on your way back home, consistency. I want you to say this in your marriage, consistency. I want you to say this on your education uh, journey, consistency. I want you to say this as you're building your house, consistency. I want you to say this as you're raising your kids, consistency. Consistency. It's the ability to be asserted together without contradiction. I ain't called Sister Sharice yet. You know what that means, Sister Sharice? It means without hypocrite type mentality. I can't say I'm going to be this and do this and my lifestyle lines up opposite of what I'm saying. So now if that's happening to you, if that's happening to me, Sister Tawana, you know what we have to build up? Our consistency. Seven years ago, I preached a message on Easter Sunday in Clearwater. It was called Choose Your Consistency. Choose Your Consistency. Many of us are consistent in some things and some we're not so much of. But you've got to choose. Jesus said, or in Revelations, God says, I would rather have you hot or cold. Choose one. Somebody say, choose one. So it means to have harmony and consistency. It means to be steady continuation. It means that the things that are happening are consistently moving. The body of Christ cannot be stopped. It has to consistently be moved. Amen. It is not wavering between different parts. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Watch this. 15 and 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast and movable. Shout this A word for me. Always. Let's get it up on the screens as quickly as you can. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always. Somebody shout always. Always. The word always embraces what? Consistency. If you're not consistent, you haven't learned from always. If you haven't learned always, you haven't learned from consistency. You're not going to have one without the other. Always loves consistency. Consistency loves always. It means that when I call on you, I can walk walk freely knowing that you're going to come. Amen. Amen. If I need you, I know you're going to answer. If I ask for something, I know you're going to deliver it. And if you don't have it, you always make a way. That's what I encourage my wife. When, I, when I'm leading my family, I tell her, honey, if, even if I don't figure it out, you know I'm going to work it out until I get it. I'm going to figure this thing out. Somebody, who, who are the problem solvers in this church? I hate walking away from it. Talk back to me. I hate walking away from a problem that I could not solve. Sister Amy left me at this church on Friday night. She was helping, and she left, what, about 8.30? I was here for three more hours because I discovered a problem. I discovered a problem. And Mother Rosetta, as a pastor, and this is exactly what I said. I was right there at, at your seat, Najai, and Najai's working the camera. God bless you, woman of God. The camera that's on me right now, she's working it, all right? And so she, I was right there about where you were, and this is exactly what I said out loud. I said, oh, to be a pastor and find a problem. Because I can't leave until I take care of it. Oh, to be Jesus Christ in your life and to see you still struggling. He can't, mm, he can't leave. Ooh, I'm so glad Jesus didn't leave me where I was struggling the most. I'm so glad Jesus didn't walk away from me where I needed him the most. I'm so glad he didn't get impatient because even though he kept saying, it's, it's discord, it's discord. Son, can you hear me? Son, can you hear me? Drunk out of my mind, high out of my mind. I, I'm in places I should not be. But God, I thank you that you knew my future although I was messing up my present time. Who am I talking to in this building? I'm so glad Deacon Charles that he knew where I was going to be and did not leave me where I was. He discovered my problem. It was too social. Then he sent me a wife who was like, you, you all right? You don't have to be with them. I had to get comfortable with that. Like, but these are my people. I've been good. With, I've been, and she's not the reason for it, but she had to teach me some things about who I'm connected with. I told you the whole thing about Ohio and me going from one place to another to let you know that I had embraced that lifestyle socially. I didn't even desire it. It just happened. How many of us have embraced things? Oh, come on, y'all talk to me today that I did not desire it. I just embraced it. I can't wait to teach y'all. There's a, there's a very, very good revelation I have for that. I'm not going to teach it today, but there will be a time, maybe in a conference, I'm going to teach you about the dangers of that right there. Preview it, but I'm going to tell you later. So 
he says, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Thank you. Knowing that your labor is not in vain. I'm going to be consistently serving this ministry, serving God's people, delivering the word of God. Pastor Sierra, you know why? Because at the end of the day, I know that my labor is not in vain. So why are we struggling? Ooh, Holy Ghost, I got to make y'all mad again. Why are we struggling with serving? With principle of just serving sister Sanaya we're struggling we're struggling because it takes too much out of your day it takes too much out of your account it takes so much after your energy and, and I'm not struggling with it because I'm hurting I'm tired I'm paying I'm sewing I'm working I'm serving and I'm tired I told my media team I'm trying to get completely off to where y'all got it I don't want to touch it we getting there I thank God for my, my, my baby girl up here amen she's working with us and so I love it because at the end of the day, all of this, it says it's not in vain, but not only that, in the Lord. My works in the Lord cannot be in vain. The, tr the true works, Gianni, in the Lord are not in vain. The true works. There's some works that we say are God-given that were really your thoughts. I got two that understand what I'm talking about. There's some things that we say that God told me to do this. And after this has been established, it's a train wreck. It's a train wreck. Who am I talking to? Is it just me? Because I'm, I'm telling you all my life testimony. I never preached stuff I've never been through. Everything I'm telling you, I've done it. I have did it. I've seen it happen. I said, God led me to this. Watch this. No offense to my, my wife. Relationships. I thought God sent me to that woman. And at the end of the relationship, it was a train wreck. It was a mess. There was no peace. If it's God, it's peaceful. You might have to help me out, Dean. Bro, you might have to help me out. Because they, they, don't, they don't hear me. They don't hear me. If it's God, it's peaceful. Peaceful. You don't have to cry. You don't have to worry. You ain't got, man, give me my phone. Not give me my phone, honey. I mean, but can you bring me my phone? Thank you. I got caught up. You, you don't got to be on your phone. Where he at? Where he at? Where she at? What's she doing? Dick, can you come here real quick? I know you. I hope you're not too sore. I need you to lay right here. I need you to just lay right there. Lay right there. This is what the people of God are doing. This is a shame. Just yeah, lay down like you sleep. Good. Right? This is a shame. Woman of God, why are you sitting next to this man? But you love God. You trust God. But you're sitting around here chasing him more than you looking for God. You try to track his every move. It don't make sense. It can't be God if you got to sneak behind God's promise. You done turned into Abram. Y'all not going to catch this word. Abram received the promise. He re Abraham received the promise. And because he was so anxious to see it happen because he was old and all this stuff, Tawana, he went around and made another, another baby. And God did not accept that. God was like, nah, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You still going to have this little boy. And when you have him, you're going to make him a sacrifice. And you're going to give him back to me. See, when his God is peaceful, if, Abram would've, if Abraham would have uh, sacrificed Ishmael, Ishmael would have been dead at that altar. You feel me? He would have stabbed him straight through the heart because that was not the promise. There's some things that we lay at the altar that when you lay it there, you think you're going to leave that with it. Nope, God said, leave it there because that was not my promise. But the things I lay at the altar that are of God, it's a sweet-smelling savor. It's peaceful. So lay up, Deacon Charles, lay up, Deacon Charles. So now, I don't come right here. Amen. My brother, I don't have to, I don't have to look behind his back. I can sit here peacefully. I don't have to worry about what he thinks about me because God sent us together. God put us together. God brought us together. So this brotherhood, this friendship, I don't have to worry about it. I'm good. You know why? Because it was God ordained. But all the fighting and bickering and issues, yeah, it takes a lot to bring two people together. But all of that is to say, if God did it 
And if God is doing it, it's going to be peaceful. It's going to be peaceful. Thank you, sir. Am I helping somebody right now? And, and, and I'm telling you what I did. I'm telling y'all what I did. I'm about to close. I'm telling y'all what I did. I put God's name on things that I wanted. And I know I ain't the only one. I put God's name on things that I wanted. And that want is tearing me up. It's messing me up. I'm crying at night. Not my wife. I'm talking about something totally different. I'm up, stressing, running back and forth. I put God on it, but I wanted it. And God was like, I'm going to let you have this. I'm not going to leave you because I love you, but I did not call for that. <laughs> That's not what I called for. So we have to learn how to be consistent. We as believers who follow Christ and we are God's children, we are not weak because we embrace the gospel. I'm not weak because I embrace the gospel. No. Somebody shout no. no. I'm one of the most strongest, most outrageous people in the world because I embrace the gospel. I'm crazy enough to believe that if God said it, he will do it. Yes. I, I, I believe it. I believe it. We faithfully trust God and his word. We are the type that with the gospel applied, we can take a lick, Deacon Charles. And we can keep on moving. I can take a hit, Mother Neil, and I can keep on trucking. I'm finished, but I'm still working. I, I, I can take a hit, Sister Marie. I can take some distraction. I can take some disappointment. I can take some losses. And I have. I've taken them already, but I'm still working. Somebody say, I've taken a hit, but I'm still working. Sister Snow, I see it all over. You've taken some hits. You've taken some losses. You've taken some disrespect. But woman of God, you still work in. Somebody say, work your stuff. Second Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, it says, we can be pressured and troubled on what? Every side. I can be troubled on every side because I embrace the gospel. I can handle that. Because I embrace God's word, I can handle trouble. Trouble don't get on my nerves. I embrace trouble because I have power over trouble. I, I can be troubled on every side. I can be, and it, it, it can be so stressful to me. But I'm not distressed. I can be perplexed, Mother Rosetta, but not in despair. There are no damsels in distress in the kingdom of God. Stop calling out for that gorilla. You don't need him. You'll catch it on the way home. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. Somebody say, thank God he didn't leave me. Sister Marie, guess what? Even as a pastor, I've been cast down, but I am not destroyed. Every time you throw me down, I get back up. Every time you think I can't get up, I what? Get back up. They might have told you, no, Sister Tawana, I remember in 2019, you told us you had a list I saw it on your refrigerator. We both going over there. Sister Tawana, sometimes she'll babysit our, um, our puppy for us, our dog. So one day we went to go pick, um, pick up Chance, and uh, on her refrigerator was a list of things she had to get done. I love it because we're in this series called Get It Done, and you're still working on those things, right? She did not envision that the process would take her into 2021. Am I right? And so she still honored the list. Because there were some things that came in. Sister Twana, talk with me, right? There were some things that came into that list of things. Those goals you had. There were some unfortunate stoppages. Some pauses. Some issues that came in. But woman of God, I'm telling you that even though some of those items were finished, you still are working. God is still working on your behalf. I don't care what come up. I don't care what they pull from the past. I don't care what it's going to cost. It will happen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Today represents the finished work of God's word and the continual working of God's promise. Thank God he wasn't finished with me while Jesus was still making his way to the cross. While Jesus was, come here, Deacon Greg, come here, come here, come on, come on, here, here. While Jesus was walking and, and making his way to the cross, right, I was still living a life in peril. I need you to act like Jesus 
like you're carrying the most heaviest thing in your life. You just been beat down half to death. You, 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 yeah, come on, I need you to walk like that. And while Jesus, watch this, while Jesus, come on, hurt some more. I need you to be more hurt than that, yeah. While Jesus was making his way to the cross. In 1987, my mama had me, and Jesus was still making his way to the cross. Before 1980s, come on back, Jesus. Before 1987, before 1984, before 1945, whatever your birth year is, before that year you were born, Jesus was making his way to the cross for you. And he knew that after 87, after 91, after 2006, after whatever year you were born, you still, come on, Jesus, was going to need Jesus to complete his work at the cross. So I thank God that while he was making his way to the cross, yet though I was acting foolish, he did not stop walking because he was offended of my lifestyle. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I brought you up here to let you know that Stay right here. Let me talk to you. I brought you up here to let you know that while Jesus was making his way to the cross, he knew the things that you would do. Ain't that awesome? He knew the things that I would do. And we, if we were carrying that cross as the Tawana, let me reverse this. You be who you are. I'm going to carry the cross. But I know, I know Greg is about to mess up. Let me get this cross off of me. Because I'm tired of carrying the weight of everybody else. I'm, I'm tired, Amy, of carrying this household. I'm tired of this. I'm tired. I don't have a finished mentality. I have a I'm not going to do it no more. That's where life pushes us. Life pushes us to the point where I can't stand it no more. I don't want to be here. I don't want to live here. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. Don't text me. Don't call me. Get up out my face. Leave me alone. But I think God, that while I was still going through my issues, he didn't throw the cross off of him. Hallelujah. It seemed like, it seemed like to me, Greg, if, if, if I can just imagine Christ on resurrection day, on the day of crucifixion, when he was being crucified, I can just imagine, Sister Katrina, that, that, that while Jesus was carrying that cross some 2,000 plus years ago, right? It seemed like he knew the weight of the world in 2021, and it seemed like it got heavier. It seemed like they was, te- they was putting 2020 on him even before 2020. And it seemed like Jesus being halfway dead, beaten to death, it seemed like the weight was getting worse. Sister Sharice, and guess what? I don't want to make it worse for God. I just want to accept him. I just want to believe in God. Am I helping somebody today? I'm trying to get to a place to let you know that we put so much on Jesus, but you can't put all that on us because we would just be like, "Uh uh-uh, I got a family to raise. (laughs) I got a job to go to. But Jesus wasn't like that. He said, Greg, I don't care what you put on the cross. Put it on there. I don't care, Deacon Charles, what you got to say. Put it on there. I don't care how hard it gets us to Catania. Put it on there. I don't care how much disrespect you get to Juana. Put it on there. I don't care how much you cuss outside of the church. Put it on there. Put it on there. Thank you, my brother. Because I want you to know that yet while we were still living our life like that, the Bible says while we were in sin, Christ, I'm paraphrasing, was making his way to the cross to die for us. Thank you, my brother. So I'm, praise God for him. And, and what's worse, Deacon Charles, is this. They were laughing at him, and we were putting sin on the cross. They were mocking him, and they were putting more shame to his name. They mocked him. They wrote on the cross as a mockery, king of the Jews. In Hebrew in, uh, Hebraic language, they wrote king of the Jews on there. As a mockery. As a mockery. They wanted to make him feel worse than they already had beat him. Has anybody ever tried to make you feel worse than they already put you down? Do y'all know what that feels like? You've all, you, I'm, I'm literally halfway down. And you're pushing me further. The, the human body and the human mind, the human spirit can only be pushed so much until it finally snaps. But I thank God. That Jesus kept his composure so I can learn how to keep mine. Being on the cross 
and still working to fulfill God's word. He was on the cross, my brother, but he was still working to fulfill God's will. He was hurting. He was still a man and all God as they nailed him on the cross. But we're getting ready to get to a place where God looked at his son and all the sins of Rosetta, Amy, Marie, Destiny, Derek, Derek, Tawana, Katanya, Sierra, Gianni, Mother Neil, Christina, Katrina, yeah, Sharice, all of us, as he was on that cross, we were the reason that God says, I must separate myself from you for a moment so you can complete this purpose. We all were that reason. And I'm not saying that as a blame. I'm not blaming us for anything. I'm saying that we were worthy for everything that he did. And that's why I have my gratitude. That's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. That's why I'll spend every hour I have to in this place because it's his house and I wanted his house to be right. I'll do whatever it takes. He said, it is finished. Jesus gave up the ghost. He did not die by accident. He died on purpose. He gave up the ghost. He said, it is finished. It means that the work, Amy, has been completed. The Greek terminology of this statement translates to being said, he paid everything in full. There is nothing left. No debt to be owed. This long debt and battle of man and sin has been completed. And now sin has a champion. His name is Jesus Christ. John 17 and 4, and 4 says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. My work to bring you that are far from God, far from the Father. My work is to bring you and reconcile you with him. Jesus brought the Old Testament and the New Testament together. He's the bridge to connect the former in the future. He's the bridge to connect you from your past to where you are going. My God, from the beginning of Genesis and the end, I told you there was about 300, 300 prophecies and words about God. He fulfilled all of them at the cross. There is no other way to God but by Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No one can get to the Father but by Jesus Christ. Jesus defeated sin for all mankind. Any persons who believe or believes this can truly be saved by Jesus. That's what makes us all the same. The difference is the working of our faith. All we have to do is, I want y'all to look at your neighbor and say this. Say, neighbor, all that's left for you now is to try Jesus. That's it. That's all that's left. All that I just preached, all that I just preached is only effective when you actually try Jesus. Our faith makes this message whole. Not the theatrics, not the jokes, not the tears. Tears are good, but tears don't bring revelation. We've, we've cried a lot of tears. Come on, y'all. We done got emotional. Sometimes some things makes us emotional, makes us remember, and we cry. But tears does not resemble revelation, choice, action, faith, lifestyle. That's how we know change has come. Amen? Tears just represents what you've been through, the pain, the emotional impact. And it's good. Let those tears come because now you're starting to embrace the journey. Because if you don't feel that, then you're neglecting what's really happening. And you're no different than the country which you live in. Nobody wants to talk about the past. Everybody wants to talk about the future. America don't like to testify. And America can't even get to testimony until they get to embracing. That's how you get the testimony. That's why we can talk about Jesus on the cross. Because he gives us the ability to testify about what he did on the cross. Let us stand.